This is a great lab that highlights a very realistic exploitation path. Out of band data exfiltration using a malicious external DTD. So we choose a product, then click check stock, and we see the XML in the post request, so we're gonna use that. So first things first, we declare our doc type. And then after that, we declare our entity. And this entity we're gonna call is gonna be called load DTD. And why is it called that? Well, it's load DTD because it's going to actually load an externally referenced DTD file. So in this case, we're gonna reference our exploit server. So we go ahead and pull that up. And in a normal scenario, you would host this DTD file somewhere else. So you'd hold, host it on your VPS or on an internal machine that the application can reach. But this should be a resource that the application can reach that is where you can host your DTD file. And the reason we have to host that DTD file is because we actually need to stack entities. And I'll go into that in a little bit. So first we have our clean definition. And we'll go ahead and reference that parameter entity load DTD here in the doc type. So now when this, uh, when the XML parser handles our XML, it's going to look for a DTD file at our exploit server at forward slash exploit. That looks clean. So what we need to do is we need to give, or we need to host a DTD file that has some entities declared. In this case, we're gonna have two and a half, basically three. So the first entity is gonna be called file. And it's basically, going to, it's basically going to reference the resource that we're trying to access. In this case, we're just getting a file called Etsy hostname. Now, if we're exfiltrating data out of band and we're using HTTP, uh, there is a challenge when you have a multi-line file. So if you have Etsy password, a lot of times the application parser, when it tries to send that uh, request or exfiltrate that data out of band to your HTTP server, that multi-line file will cause some errors. So you actually won't even be able to exfiltrate that data sometimes. So the solution usually is using FTP, file transfer protocol. That's my go-to. But unfortunately with Portswigger Academy setup or Web Security Academy setup, you can't really host an FTP server and have it talk to it. So I'm setting up a lab um, on my own time that hopefully can actually let us like demo this live. So keep an eye out for something like that in the future. But for now, here we are. So uh, the next entity we're gonna call stack and you'll see why in a second. Because basically what we're doing is we're going to declare an entity within an entity. So we'll call this entity here xfill. And the reason we're calling it xfill is it's because it's going to be an HTTP request again to our exploit server. But instead of requesting the DTD file, what it's going to do is it's actually going to send an HTTP request to our attacker controlled server with the contents of file appended to the end of the, of the request URL. So in this case, the contents of Etsy hostname are going to actually be appended to this HTTP request to our external server, essentially allowing us allowing for us to exfiltrate the contents of this file out of band. So we have the file, we have the stack, we'll go ahead and declare it. So load DTD is also already referenced. It's going to fetch this DTD file. File is going to get the contents of Etsy hostname. Stack creates an entity xfill which sends a request to our server and appends the contents of file. So the only thing we need to really reference is stack and xfill here. So we'll reference stack. It's a parameter entity and we'll try to reference xfill here, but I think they don't allow for um, entity declaration outside of the doc type, right? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll have to actually make this a parameter entity. Now the challenge here is because we're declaring this entity within another entity, instead of us just using a percent sign here, we're going to have to use what's called a character reference, which references the character using its hex value. So ampersand pound x25 semicolon in this case. That should evaluate to the percent sign that we need for this declaration. So let's store the exploit, send the request, and take a look at the access log. That looks good to me. We got two requests from the same source. One was to exploit, and the other one was again to our server, but with the host name appended. So what we can do is we can try to submit that solution, see if it's correct. And it looks like we're good. Let's break it down one more time. Why, first of all, why do we do this? The reason we're doing out of band exfiltration is because the response doesn't return what's within product ID or store ID. There's no application error that's saying, oh, that entity that you're declaring or referencing, um, yeah, here's the contents of it. So because of that, we have to look for out of band data exfiltration. And to do out of band data exfiltration, we need to do two things. 
one, we declare an entity, so we have to be able to actually have this application talk outbound. So if there's any egress filtering, this might not work. But we need to go ahead and have this application or this XML parser fetch our entity. And what this entity looks like is, excuse me, <laughs> we have the XML parser fetch our externally hosted DTD. And that's what load DTD is. Then from there, we have this file entity, which is the referenced data we want to get, whether it be a, a system file or we want the application to send a request somewhere and we want to see the response, whatever it is. Then we have an entity within an entity. We have stack and we have xfil. xfil sends the data out of band and appends file to the end of it. And then we reference all three within this post request. And that's essentially out of band exfiltration. It looks messy when you look at it initially, but once you kind of follow the flow and follow the logic a little bit, it starts to make more sense. You'll play with some errors. In this case, if we tried to declare, or if we tried to declare xfil in this post body, we'd have an issue. So we had to use a parameter entity. But at the end of the day, this is generally the type of payload you're gonna to use to exfiltrate data out of band. Well, that's all I got for this video. If you want any more from me, you can check me out on twitch.tv forward slash gar underscore seven. Every Monday and Thursday, I do educational live streams and giveaways, so I'd love to see you there. If you learned something from this video, or if you have any feedback at all, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. But other than that, hope to see you next time. Thanks again.